and you're live. Go. On this episode of NSFW, the entirety of Twit has left on lavish vacations, leaving the poor, meager beggars of NSFW to wreak havoc in their palaces while we waft alone. We train a Bengal tiger how to drink from a saucer of milk, fire a gun in the air, and then blame somebody of a different race, and then kick each other in the head. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 108, recorded on December 22nd, 2011. Juju Boys versus the Hindustani Post. NSFW is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly, all streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. And Ford! Featuring voice-activated sync with Applet. Now you can control select smartphone apps with your voice, so you can keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Check it out in the 2012 Ford Fiesta and at Ford.com slash technology. Hey, where are you? Hey, where are you? I'm waving. Hi. How long have you guys been open? How's your mom? You open this for me? I kind of want a hot dog. Do you want to split a cookie? Is that a mojito? Can I have a chip? Just... Is that lip balm? Is this my water? Is that a coffee? I might get one. Is that hummus? Is that hummus? That's not okay. That is so not fair. That is so true. Try some. Does this taste funny to you? Smell this. So good, right? So good, right? Ooh, is this bacon? But this chips away from me. I love wine. That poor dog needs water. Ice cream makes me cough. <coughs> uh huh. <coughs> mm hmm. I'm not like super hungry. I'm kind of like. I'm just like. <laughs> I can't believe I ate all that. Yes! And just like that, that means it is go time for NSFW! The new show for the win, the new sauce for the Webernest, the show that is nominally safe for work. As always, I'm your humble host, Mr. Brian Brushwood, joined as forever and all eternity as bound by our marriage pact in heaven, one Justin Robert Young, Professor J.R.Y. the third. What is up, sir? I'm doing my calisthenics for my morning constitution. <laughs> Wait, morning constitution means taking a dump. Is that really what you heard? No, a morning well, a morning constitution can mean anything that you do every morning. So it could be taking a walk or maybe some light stretching or pooping. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, so, uh, hey, man, what do we got on tap for today? Uh, Brian, this is what we like to call an as live episode. Now, when you say as live, because I noticed something sounded weird at the beginning. It seemed like... We were stumbling stupidly through our usual pre-edited package at the beginning, and that's why everything felt really awkward. Yeah. Also, you might have heard Brian talking over some of the graphics packages that normally don't have any of our audio. The reason why, and also the reason uh, that we're going to do nothing that I mentioned in the intro, <laughs> is because we're recording this as live, because there's not a lot of episodes, Brian, that we get to sort of have flexibility with the show. The show has always been kind of our own creative expression. We do exactly what we would, what we want to do and what we would like to see. Well, it's it's chaos theory, right? Like we have an idea. It's the whole show is always a Rube Goldberg ex Berg experiment. It's where like we have this idea that if we lay all these elements out, I don't know, maybe something funny will happen, right? And, yes. and we've gotten better over time of knowing which elements, you know, you're like, oh, this gear doesn't go up and down. This gear randomly shouts the N word. And so we figured out which <laughs> ones to put in where. It's a really tricky gear. <laughs> it is. Imagine it's... it like that's like the Ace Hardware commercial. <laughs> Like, come in to our after Christmas sale. We have hammers for five dollars. The gear that accidentally says the N word for three. <laughs> exactly. So it's it's this weird delicate science where the, I mean the show isn't of itself. It's its own thing, and especially now that chat room controls half the stuff we do. You know, we are we are but uh, passengers on this train. Yes, and we've done episodes 
we we call it between the sheets kind of style episode because that was one of the bits that we did in an episode that we pre-recorded because out of necessity, right? Because you were doing Halloween Horror Nights at the time, right? And we just simply could not record. Boy, was that ever well received at the time too? I mean, that was just people instantly loved it. Yeah. <laughs> Went head over heels. Brian between the sheets mania swept the nation. <laughs> Look at your local bonds, boys and girls. Well, between the sheets nation is sweeping our sweet fair America. No, they did not like it. And they I think hated it's... it. Oh. <laughs> and as soon as, and part of it was because we sold it as, boy, do we have a surprise for you guys tonight? And by we, I mean me, because you were busy, which is why we couldn't do it. So yeah, I, I had a show. School. I was I was actually out of town doing a show at a college that night. Yes. So I I was I was like like oh well come on here we go like I'll hype it up it'll be fun it'll be something new people won't expect it. And then uh, it turned out to be a pre-recorded episode, and as soon as uh, the chat realm realized that they were none too pleased. Well, and not only a pre-recorded episode, but I remember we had all kinds of technical issues on just playing the dang thing. Like, like it didn't upload fully, oh, or they had to yeah, re-encode yeah. it or something ridiculous. Like so it had like it was a crazy thing where there was a gear that randomly said the N-word and people <laughs> really offended by it. Well, and, and then the other part too was I remember my show finished, and I was actually able to go to the hotel. Hotel had good Wi-Fi, so I'm like, like, oh, let me watch. And I turn it on, hoping to see the tail end of the episode, but it's still you on there treading water. So awkwardly, I join you to, to as the two of us awkwardly tread water as we present a And meanwhile, episode. that only fuels the fire of the chat room. We're like, you're both on now! <laughs> Just <laughs> get my show! <laughs> Now, now the irony, of course, is is that episode eventually, like like they were angry at, they rioted at the time, but then they, uh, after a while, they're like, uh, they started to use half the memes that we thought up during it. They started to say they thought it was pretty funny, and then they were cutting episodes out of it, and eventually that became the model for how we did Night Attack, the comedy album, the Billboard Top Ten comedy album. Indeed, uh, in case anyone has has not heard of us talk about it yet, yeah, <laughs> our, our 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 Billboard uh, charting comedy album. Um, yeah, so we figured, you know what? Every once in a while, this is just like a, like a decompression. You know, we have we have a situation where this is gonna fit in, and that is what this week is. And because everyone else at Twit is out living the high life again, um, we're gonna be here giving you comedy in this pre-wrapped version. And that uh, okay, so let's talk real quick. What do you want to do this episode? But let's, let's go over um, what are the what are the biggest news stories of of 2011. Are we really going to do a year in review 2011 episode? This is what we like to call it, uh, uh, something that starts us off. Because you know how this show goes, Brian. Yes. No, you're we're right. We're just going to start talking about how fat Kim Jong-il's son is. <laughs> and then next thing you know, we're going to be doing like the 15-year plan for butterball turkeys that somehow involves the Hindus. I'm going to – the Hindus. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Juju Boys Where versus the, the Hindus. Hindus. <laughs> H-I-N-D-U-D-E-S. Where the Hindus? <laughs> What's funny is you. Hey, Rashnish! <laughs> get off of the barn! Yeah, I want to see a crossover between the Hindus and the two bros, bro. It's like, it's like you got one house with the Hindus and the other one's like, it's two bros, bro. That might be too many memes. We too many memes in the pee pod. Uh, okay, we can look at the Google 2011 Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist 2011, uh, how the world was searched. Let me actually capture the rest of this here. Do you pay attention to any of these? Now, the one thing I like about the Google Zeitgeist is that it's honest because, like, you know, nobody's curating this list. This is what was most searched for. Yes, yes. And uh, we also know that it's totally honest because Google Plus appears in the top two results. <laughs> Ah, uh, dude. Okay, what does it say about us in general that like half these, half these things I don't I don't even check or know. I mean, like I'm I'm looking at these. How many of these do you know or care? I can't believe these are the most searched. I buy it. Fastest rising global queries. Well, let, let's okay. So these are fastest rising. Yeah, All right, these are so. the ones that went from like you know obviously. Probably, you know, we'll say that Michael Jackson's going to have a certain number of, of hits no matter what. But then all of a sudden, a new one for something new that happened in 2011, you're going to see a lot. And you know what? And uh, that would make sense because it would skew Google Plus 
to the top because you're yeah, going to go to Google, Google Plus to didn't type in exist, Google Plus. And then all of a sudden, people were searching a lot for Google Plus. So you have on this list Rebecca Black is number one, Google Plus, Ryan Dunn, Casey Anthony, Battlefield 3, iPhone 5, which of course is funny that because it didn't come out. Right. Um, Adele, uh, a bunch of squiggly words. No, that's that I, that's got to be Fukushima. Um, I think it might mean teriyaki. <laughs> no, I, I'm almost certain because you remember there was a bit of a there was a bit of a snafu with that with that nuclear. That one plant. time I spilled teriyaki on my lap. No, well, is that yeah, what you were talking about. Well, yeah, that and and the fact that there was a nuclear. Uh, you, I wanted to get some snap peas and teriyaki sauce with chicken, and then I spilled it on my lap, and I went, <laughs> "Oh my god." How do I clean this up? And I Googled teriyaki. I'm trying to get this. Every time I capture it, it just jiggles more and more. So it we're, is jiggly. We get a jiggle Every dance no I'm matter jiggling. what. But, uh, uh, and then Steve Jobs, uh, who I'm not familiar with, and iPad 2. Yeah. Uh, I, I can honestly say I know virtually nothing about Casey Anthony or Adele. Really? No, you don't. You don't know about Casey Anthony. Well, I know. I know she's the one who, like, I the first I heard about Casey Anthony was when, like, it was the OJ decision all over again. A miscarriage of justice was all I heard. Yes. Well, I, I know, maybe I'm way into it because it's a Florida thing because it happened in Orlando. So oh. this was all over the place. It's like, all people crazy that, things like, happen. Like friends of mine that never talk about any newsworthy thing were like, like, yo. Casey Anthony, you watching that Casey Anthony trial? Like, like my little brother, who is about as unplugged and and out of the loop as anybody I know that is younger than me. Uh, it's I mean, just I, like all of a sudden one day get, gets all up in my face about like, yo, you've been following that Casey Anthony thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the story? She killed a kid, or no? Well, all right. So all of a sudden. And by the way, welcome, welcome to NSFW's new program, news that happened six months ago that Brian's <laughs> just now finding out about. <laughs> We should have a graphic. <laughs> Somebody make a graphic for that, and we'll award you and one do a, i5. And do, do a theme song where it's like, it happened half a year ago, but Brian just found out about it. You want, so you want the, the, uh, the Paul Schaefer? Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, all right. So here's the deal. Casey Anthony has a, a, uh, a, a child, right? She is a young party girl. She's, by all accounts, maybe not the best mother Maybe not all that excited to have a kid, okay? All right. All of a sudden, kid's missing. She calls the police saying the kid's missing. But not until after some period of time. I don't remember exactly, but it's like weeks. We're talking about like weeks. Oh, wow. Like long enough, after like, like and the kid's what? Two years old, eight year olds, 10 year old? Uh, between one and two, I believe. All right. So a toddler goes missing and it's days and days before she calls it in. Yeah. And in the intervening time, she, uh, there's pictures of her just going buck wild at clubs, like, you know, like showing her butt and like shaking her boobs around Are and you just being me? like the most freak nasty hoe on the planet in the greater Orlando area. Oh my God. Where are those um, pictures? So next thing you know, uh, they find, uh, what, what seems to be, well, I don't know, there's no body, but they, the cops come to the conclusion that listen, uh, this woman killed her kid and threw it in the woods, and that's the end of the day. And and when you when you go into it, like there's all these inconsistencies with her story. Apparently, she like made up names and boyfriends, and she constantly lied to like everybody in her family. And um, so she has this like really crazy like no shot in hell of winning this case, except for the fact that the state decides to go for first degree murder. Oh, so and they overreached like they could have they could have they could have dinged this on manslaughter slam dunk and done, done and done. Yeah. Done. You're or even, or even You're... second degree like uh, like look, we're sure enough your kid's gone and then you know, but, and if you didn't do it then you allowed it to happen. Yes. Then you were in goats with the Hindus. <laughs> you and the Hindus got together with the two bros, bro. You threw a giant party, and one of the Hindus who's like way overweight accidentally sat on your kid, and and that makes you a murderer. Vashonara, <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> with the body? Um. Okay. So so um. So anyway, so uh, so they go over first degree murder, and by the way, her lawyer, Casey Anthony's lawyer, is like a first degree goon. Like, he is the goonies goon of lawyers ever. The day that the verdict's read. He's such a goon. He ended his, 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 uh, his closing argument with the truffle shuffle. No, basically, <laughs> listen. He, 
the, the day the, the, the verdict was there, before it was read, a court TV camera, he slides in front of it and gives it the double thumbs up and then like walks into the courtroom. Are you serious? Where is this? Why is For real? It, why, why has nobody put together a video package like that's a minute and a half long of all the greatest hits of why this is the greatest news story ever? Hello? He hello. As live. This is as live, people. Well, yeah, this uh, locally everything worked. Can you not hear me all of a sudden? Uh, yeah, you got a little, you got a little garbly. Say that again. Oh, I was just saying, why did we not have like a ninety-second package of just you know all the awesome moments that make this that that to explain to me why this was the story of the year? It was the story of the year because this number one, she's hot, and never, never, ever, ever, ever discount of uh, a story being less interesting because she's hot, and mm. that's not a good picture of her. <laughs> yeah, that they have on there. That's like her mugshot, but like she's a she's a very sexy girl. The gun you don't bring home to mother because she probably murdered her child. <laughs> right. All right. And now seems like the perfect time for us to hear about the fine folks over the Ford Motor Company. Let's take it over with a pre-recorded advertisement. Hey everybody, Leo Laporte. I thought we'd take a, a little ride. We've been talking about the Ford Sync and my Ford Touch for so long. And I've never actually shown you how it works. You know, Ford sent down this new 2012 Ford Focus, not mine to keep, alas. But I would like to show you, as long as I've got it, a little bit about the nav and the services and the app link and all the cool things. Let's get inside and I'll give you a tour of the 2012 Ford Focus. We're gonna, I'm just going to go for a little ride. Look, see this button? Watch. I got my foot on the brake. You press the button. It's a fob. Keyless. Car starts up. Oh, here we go. I like this too, when the screen comes on, it says, hello, good morning, you're arriving, you're driving a Ford. All right, let's go here. Yeah, this is nice, this is sweet. Hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. That's the whole idea behind Sync and my Ford Touch. But you hit this paddle right here and you can do anything. So one of the nice things, of course, uh, about Sync and my Ford Touch is I can connect to a cell phone. I've got my uh, iPhone hooked up here. But not just as a phone, I can make calls with it, of course, but can I, I can also uh, use it as a media device. So watch, I'll play a song here. Please say a command. Audio. Audio, say a command. Play artist Steely Dan. Playing artist Steely Dan. And now without doing anything, I've picked an artist. I can do the same thing with podcasts, books on tape or audiobooks, anything that's on my devices, I can play. I can even say, let's play the radio. The idea is you can do anything you want with this. Uh, you've got a whole media hub, so if you've got a Nano, the kid's Nano, if you've got a phone via USB or Bluetooth, uh, you just talk to it and tell it what you want to hear. Let, let's give it a try here. This is while I'm driving. USB. USB. Play artist Steely Dan. Now that's cool, isn't it? It's little things like that to just make it a pleasure to drive a Ford. And we're back. <laughs> hey, uh, we just saw we just saw all about the fine folks at the Ford Motor Company and uh, learned a bunch of interesting stuff about their car. Thank God. And you're back. Uh, look, me and the chat realm were talking imaginarily, and uh, we decided that this whole first segment took a dump because you actually tried to tell me the real story instead of us making fun of them or lighting farts on fire. So we need to we need to funny this up real fast and no, go. Right. Yeah, no, let's 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 roll. Well, yeah, let's, let's 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 go, let's go with the site, guys. Maybe maybe if we look at the as live people, as live, the frozen face of Justin Roberts Young. The tension mounting in the air as he reaches over to his snowball microphone. The disappearance as it closes. And all we see on the screen is Skype saying, Call from Justin Robert Young. Duration, 52 seconds. And then we get him back as he triumphantly returns. Hi. Hey, Justin. Do you do you want to, do you want to scrap that whole back section and then just come back from the Ford ad and uh, and we'll just continue through with the zeitgeist and we'll just do more making up of the stories? Let's let's look let's look at the zeitgeist. Now I, I have I have I have I have some I have some faith. Listen, you can't 
Let, let's, let's you are it. holding on so tenaciously. You've got this dragon talent like grip. You have this bizarre vision that we have the ability to do live to tape and have the whole thing play. And even though it obviously trains Rex, your eyes light up with a fire and you're like, it's great. This is great. It's all great. <laughs> There's no this who great. says this is train wrecks. We've had the Hindu show up. <laughs> we have, we're making jokes about child death. This is going great. Um, all right. So let's keep on rocking the zeitgeist then. Uh, what do you, you you take? Pick one from the board, Justin well, Robinson. All right. Let's 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 give a little of uh, a, a, a year that was. What is the deal with everybody hating Rebecca Black's stupid child face? Okay, hold. <laughs> I would love to think that that's how the news would report this, where it's like, what's the deal with everyone hating dot, dot, dot? And then he just turns into a troll and says, Rebecca Black's stupid child face. Yeah, like a fat little child face. And she kind of looks like an Eskimo. Oh, no. What? What's that wrong with There's what? not Eskimos. Look at that flying wild Alaska lady. If there is a, well, okay. Now that I kind of see it now. Um, look. <laughs> Help, let me tell you, man, Rebecca Black ends up having staying power. Like, like we thought it was a, an in and out thing, but uh, but but sure enough, sticking around with extra hits, and I even saw her appear like with a walk on on some other crap. But like, is she really staying, or are we still just? Is it just a testament to how big of a hit? And really, the, the tsunami of hate. Hitler would have looked at what happened to Rebecca Black and been like, man, people are giving her a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> really? I did some not so good thing myself, but I don't think even I deserve the treatment they give the Rebecca Black. Well, look at how many dislikes! What does that do for a young woman? Some confidence, I wonder. It's not even a lightsaber anymore! There's no handle! You can't do, you can't hold it in it! Hey, it's Justin Robert Young, what's up? Oh, man. I swear to God, I am going to pee on my router. <laughs> You uh all right, let's I'll watch that. Would that save the episode? <laughs> yeah. We were actually you know what? I think it's whenever we almost start to get funny because we were onto something with Rebecca Black and Hitler, and then all of a sudden, uh it just craps out. I have no idea what it is, because my router like is showing me like that everything's working and like it resets like it has when it's been annoying. Like your router's it's... your router's like that that a hole roommate is like, I think everything's fine. It's fine. So you don't want to make a big deal about it. My lights it's are like, on. It's like, who's peeing in the kitchen sink? And my, my, my asshole roommate, Trevor, is like, oh, not me. I don't know. It's not me. Do you ever, do you and ever I think... come back in. I'm like, why does it smell like pee again? The only person here was Trevor. Trevor, <laughs> you pee in the sink. Trevor's like, look, my, my fly zipped. My, my, my fly lights flashing <laughs> steady green. That means that I, I couldn't have the... I... Huh? Huh? So, okay, you however, think... However, the faster someone shakes their head no, the more they're lying. <laughs> so like, ask me something that you know I'd be lying about. Uh, Justin, is, in fact, it a terrible idea that we try to do this entire episode live to tape? <laughs> What's funny, <laughs> I can see on your eyes for a brief second that you're like, well, I can say yes by actually slowing it, <laughs> slowing this down. <laughs> <laughs> this is like our weird diving bell and butterfly code that we're setting up now. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, well, yeah. No, listen, the line of Dave thing, it was a really good idea that was not aided by the technological realities of my crap ass router. All right, well, look, let, let's make a prediction then. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Black, will we hear from another song this year from her? No, twenty twelve. She's done. Bury really? her, and I mean physically. I mean find her and throw her in a in a freshly dug hole, and then throw dirt on top of her. All right, her and her crazy, weirdly segmented eyes, like a bug, are over. <laughs> so, what about Google Plus? Will we hear about Google Plus in twenty twelve? Oh, I'll tell you what. Here, yeah, here's a good thing. Let's say, will it survive? Okay, it's that's clearly the bit I was setting up and clearly going forward. But thank you for stopping it to tell everyone the bit that I'm that we've just started. You know, Brian, some people are idiots like me, and <laughs> it's spelled out in idiot language by an idiot. Now. Like I'm sitting here, it's like we have all these technological disasters. And I think, how can I save this with a process that we can step forward through? And finally, we're on to something. <laughs>
<laughs> and then it's not the router, it's you. They're like, oh, whoa, 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 hold on. I have an idea. I didn't say I had an idea. <laughs> I just, I was, I, I was recognizing what you were doing and just restating it okay. because I'm, I'm in the moment. All right. Listen, Brian, like Harry Potter speaks parcel tongue. I speak more on that. <laughs> I need to communicate to the idiots in our audience. There's like, there's, you're walking down the street and everyone else just hears, <laughs> and then you're like, I think he has a really good point. <laughs> yeah, it's like I speak more. Like, on you're that. like you're like like uh like oh wow like that that is that is a really uh that's an excellent breed of of doction, and then I just scream, that's a party dog. <laughs> and there was a certain segment of the population that you really speak to, and the certain population that I really speak. Hey, to. I'll hit them high. I'll take them high. You take them low. Uh, okay, God. so so Rebecca Black, you're gonna say buried. nothing. She totally. Let's say all right. Are they gonna be buried? under three feet of sand in a in the worst beach on earth or <laughs> exultant to heaven and immortality <laughs> that's the t in fact that's the title of this segment <laughs> buried under three feet of earth and urinated upon or exalted to high heavens as god incarnated in a in flesh Thanks for restating the bit, Brian. <laughs> I'm trying to get the goddamn bit going, and you have to stop it and say, I have an idea. Let me retitle the bit that you just titled. <laughs> Touche, sir. Google Plus. Exalted to high heaven. And let the clarion calls of angels plus one everything forever. <laughs> okay. Now, do you think do you think it will continue to grow and actually over? Do you think it has a chance to take on Facebook? Nope. I think it's <laughs> when they're done growing. I just really like it, and I don't want it to go away. I love it, man. I love it. And I don't want it to go away, and that has nothing. Well, let's point out why you love it. Uh, yeah, that you has love nothing it to do. Because you're a mega celebrity. That's. Uh, it has nothing to do with the fact that at this moment, uh, I, my first thing I do every morning is check and see how much higher I've climbed on the ranks. And more specifically, who you've leapfrogged. Oh, you're not. You're not gonna call me out on that because this is that's private. That was between you and me when I call and giggle like I'm ahead of so and so. <laughs> He does. He calls me up, and I'm like, hello? And Brian's like, hey, Swan. I just dumped over Robert Scoble. <laughs> so uh, uh, you actually just reminded me something. Um, it's weird. Like, for as long as I've known Ryan Connolly from the beginning, I think, like, the second time I called him to be on the BB Live show, he answered the phone going, Brian Brushwood. And I'm like, Ryan Connolly. <clears throat> and he's like, I think I'm just going to answer the phone like that every time you call now. And, uh, and for, like, two years, like, every single time, he always answered the phone like that. Uh, I was at his house where we shot that thing the other day, but my flight, I, we had to get out the door by 6 a.m., yeah. And, and it was like uh, it was like six o'clock and he hadn't come out of his room yet or whatever. I didn't want to go banging on his door. So I, I, I dialed his number to wake him up. And, uh, and, and as it's ringing, he picks up and I hear Brian Brushwood. <laughs> <laughs> like he still did it quietly so he wouldn't wake up his wife. So uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, all right. So Google Plus uh, triumphant uh, <laughs> Ryan Dunn. <laughs> Ryan Dunn is 2012, the year that Ryan Dunn, whose life was cut tragically short in 2011, um, when he was uh, drunk and driving all over the place. Yeah. Is By the way, did you hear the like uh, Viva La Bam out or uh, like commentary where they talk about how horrible of a driver Ryan Dunn is? Oh, no. Like, that's some stuff they had said on the record. Like, one of these days, you're going to be driving drunk and totally kill yourself. He's no, like, they <laughs> literally <laughs> say, the person, the person that we know that will die first is Ryan Dunn, and it's because he drives like an ass. Wow. No, I did not hear that. I heard that about the That being said, ready the beach, boy, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Dunn. He's, he's dead, so... There's really no way we can say he's going to have a big comeback in 2012. Now, 2013, though, might be long enough if we're able to find enough stories to, to you know, blow him up after death. But what would, what would, all right, what's the Ryan Dunn story that would have to pop that brings him back to massive problems? Uh, there would have to be a massive resurgence of popularity of the Jackass franchise, whether, regardless oh, of how. it's got to be more than that. Why? It's got to be specific to Ryan Dunn. Well, no, no, no. If it's a Jackass thing, 
then the most popular person on Jackass is Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville would get the benefit of that. It doesn't have to be Ryan Dunn specific. No, uh, uh, well, no, no, no. It, 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 if the if the rest of the band, you know, like the bassist gets killed and has a tumultuous history, like like if the Edge died on U two, and then U two, you know, blew up in even more popularity, they're gonna spend the next year talking about this dedicated to the Edge. Now pull out your cell phones and say, "We miss you, Edge. Here's some reading light in heaven." And then, uh, uh, and, and <laughs> if they were doing that, then people and like the Edge is in heaven, going, "Where have we got lights?" <laughs> He's like, he's like, I think about it. You're shining the, on the side of the book. I can't read any better. You're making it worse. I can't read the cover when I'm reading the pages. <laughs> and look, let's say I turn it up. Now I'm just looking at the back of the book, and you're shining on the words, but I can't read them. I mean, I can't, I can't read the, the summary. I can't read the blurbs when I'm looking at the cover. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe the, the spine. I can read the spine. This is not helpful, is what I'm saying. I wait a minute. Let me lay on my back. <laughs> oh wait, yep, that works. <laughs> All right, wait. That works now. Now that I think about it, I uh, that's very th very courteous of you. Thank you. <laughs> what was that? Very courteous. Very no, very courteous of you. Very courteous. <laughs> You're be not unlike Curtis. My friend Curtis used to do stuff like that, and this was very <laughs> very courteous of you. That was very courteous of you. <laughs> That's what, that's what I'm going to start calling it now. That's very courteous of you, sweetheart. And then, <laughs> I'm going to see if Bonnie, I'm going to start subtly using that for Bonnie and see when she calls me out. As like, oh, no, 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 it's courteous. It's, it's, everyone oh, has no, their you never friend. heard that? Yeah, no, no. I always say that all the time. Yeah. It's very courteous of you. No, very courteous of you. So, so anyway, but in the, that case... In that case, so uh, you, you've got the rest of the rising tide there and the one left behind. I mean, that's when you go back and you talk about, you know, the one who missed out. Like a uh, freaking, uh, blah, 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 what's his name? The comedian. Oh, oh, Pol Pot. <laughs> Uh, okay, look, but, but the point is if the rest of Jackass makes a comeback, if they have a, because Jackass has been around long enough that they could come back and be introduced as all brand oh, new. I, th I think we will certainly see a Jackass that is heavily like R.I.P. Ryan, you know, they're all doing dunny things. Right. But I, I still think that that brings him up to the zeitgeist level. I don't think he's ever on this list again. Uh, yes. Okay. No, that's true. That's a good point. Wait, but you can't be on this. Hold on. Th th this list is defined by what went from zero to 100 this year. But I'll bet you Steve Jobs have been on there before. Okay. Anything else? You think <laughs> iPad 2 is going to be on it? I mean, you can say none of these will be on there again. Google Plus won't iPhone be on there 5 will. Okay, well, that's that's only because everyone was searching for the wrong Well, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, Casey Anthony, probably dead and buried? Uh, no, we have we have repeat potential with <laughs> Oh, He's, my gosh. Uh, Oh, yeah, no, Ascended to the Heavens. We have, because there's a whole second act for Casey Anthony that we don't know about. I didn't even think about that. Born, sells her story, does a book tour, reality show. She, Casey Anthony does a, does a porn version. They're like, you've seen the tabloids. Now see the story where it began at Inception. <laughs> And then it's like she plays Casey Anthony plays herself in the role of a lifetime, detailing how the poor child was born. This is this is the worst thing we've ever come. <laughs> That's but yeah, terrible. No, I think there's there's plenty there's plenty of room for for Casey that that she can go. All right. Would you watch it, Casey Anthony? If everybody was talking about like it's horrifying for some reason, whatever channel decides to take it on. Right. Let's say he's just on YouTube. Okay. So nobody has to take, uh, the, no TV channel takes the risk. All of a sudden, YouTube oh my channel, God. You, you're... Casey Anthony reality show, and it's 10 minutes and just Kim Kardashian or the newlyweds or whatever, like just regular day to day reality show, teen mom kind of thing, uh, just following her around. But it's the, the biggest thing on the internet. Do you watch it? Uh, yeah, with a horrified fascination, but but I you went a different way. You you went reality. What I 
I think you have a great idea. Remember when everyone would roll their eyes about made for cable television movies as being like the lowest of the low? And then like the, the so and so story, the, you know, Jesse Ventura's Boa, the forgotten story. Uh, yeah. Like, it, it, there should be even lower stuff that people could make. Like, everyone it, forgets about Jesse Ventura's Boa. <laughs> Some think he wore to... a scarf, <laughs> maybe even an ascot. Some people pretend that his machine gun in Predator was named Boa. No, I'm the boa, and I used to be all over the WWF. That's what we called it back then. I have trace elements of cocaine and pee on me. I'm Jesse Ventura's boa. You wouldn't believe the celebrity DNA buried deep inside my folds. <laughs> Captain Lou Albano. People would steal me in the middle of the night and rub me up and down their butt cracks so they would know that Jesse Ventura would be wrapping it around his face. You should have seen my face when I was between the cheeks of Zsa Zsa Gabor. <laughs> this is before the amputation, see? <laughs> of course, of course. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, all right, so you're saying the Casey Anthony story. So somebody on YouTube yeah, does what, what, a made-for-TV reenactment or dramatization of... But not just that story, not just that story, but every horrific tabloid, every insane thing that like nobody would touch with the right not with the right mind. Some 18 year olds with a couple of video cameras should freaking throw together a, a 30 minute reenactment of it with all this horrific, uh, you know, distasteful stuff. That would be great. Like like their own like E true Hollywood story. Yes. Kind of thing. And it's just just like because they have no advertisers and no responsibility, just wildly speculating. It's just nothing but but you know, tabloid porn of just like and then he turned and punched an old lady. Like just full yeah. on horrific caricatures. It's like it was at that point that Casey decided to punt her baby into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the film ride boys asking for advice on the effects <laughs> there's like it's, we know we're like like the police want to track him down and so they're like then we found this clip and he's reading these horrific you know how would you realistically make it look like a baby was being punted across, <laughs> across this week hedge? on film ride we show you the best baby to punt into the woods <laughs> I like the fact that the Find attorney... a rubber baby. <laughs> <laughs> All part of the formula. Uh, all, right. all right, what next is on there? Battlefield Three. Now you so can't. That's a game that 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 that's come and gone. So you're gonna bury that one. Okay. Right? No, but 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 let's say will Battlefield Four show back up on this list? Well, you're the video game guy. What well, do you you're... think I do? Write a video. No, what are you, no. head writer on a brand new video game show on the Twit Network? Game on, coming on January fifteenth. Wink. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think that'll that'll be there'll be something like that. iPhone five, that's such a cheap. No, hold thing. on, let's just go back to battle real quick. So you're, I mean, obviously, you, I think you have your finger on the pulse uh, of this community a little better than than I do. I just write jokes about it. Um. Battlefield went went really hard at, at Modern Warfare, and it's not like Modern Warfare seems to have slowed down. But do you think that Battlefield has has built up a beachhead? Well, uh, that no, it I could I, eventually take over Modern Warfare. I think. Well, first of all, Modern Warfare vastly outsold Battlefield Three. Battlefield Three did really well, and and it brings a, a unique thing, uh, especially a PC centric focus on it, which is why they're able to, you know, with a higher end. Uh, 3D setup that you get on a PC, they're able to 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 go harder with it. But remember, this list is the ones that went from one to a thousand, and uh, Modern Warfare had already been an established franchise. So Battlefield Three was was pretty dormant because the last uh, I guess there was Battlefield Bad Company, uh, which I didn't even play. But before that, it was Battlefield Two was around two thousand five, I think two thousand four. This, this was a dead franchise that they revived in a, in a big way, but. Yeah. I mean, could Battlefield 4 be another big jump that it's like, no, but for reals, this is the one that's going to be bigger than Modern Warfare. I want to hear, I want to hear that. I want to hear trailers for video games and eventually movies that are told in that kind of style. Where they're like, no, but for real, she fall in love. You do not even understand. Racist. Just racist. I was just, I was doing. You... Yo, but they got guns. <laughs> How are they gonna get out of that building? <laughs> no guns! And it's like they show action scenes for the movie, and they're like, uh oh, building falling down. How are you gonna do? Oh, you found an escape hatch! <laughs> uh, 
Uh, all right. <clears throat> no Tron people. How about you get some more blue wine? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is? Oh, on Tron people. <laughs> what is this? These ain't people. There's like lines and food. Oh, this is a cartoon, isn't it? Also racist. No, iPhone five. Well, that's a topic that we'll talk about after we mention Netflix. Because <laughs> you want to know what you'll be able to watch on your iPhone five? Netflix. Hardcore pornography. Mm -hmm. Also, when you're done with that, Netflix. No, but uh, Steve Jobs said no porn in the App Store. Hmm. But there is not but only one way to get pornography, as is taught in the good book. <laughs> <laughs> and yea, it was spoken to the masses. Thou shalt not view pornographies upon an iOS device unless it be through the Safari browser, soon to have private browsing capabilities enabled. Oh, really? I, I may have read somewhere. Can we all... All right, listen, we'll get into this after we talk about <laughs> Netflix and how awesome it is. Netflix, folks, um... How often do you say in a week you watch Netflix, Brian? Thrice. Thrice weekly. Thrice weekishly. <laughs> and and, and yeah. after you turn off your Netflix machine, do you say to your young lady, ah, uh, mighty Curtis of you? <laughs> now keep in mind, uh, I myself may view upon the Netflix only thrice weekishly. However... <laughs> Mine children do indeed, uh, in most courtesy, <laughs> wait, courtesy, uh, watch, I mean, they, the kids have to watch it at least, uh, I'd say a dozen hours a week. I mean, two hours, an hour and a half a day, at least. They watch- Verily. <laughs> thrice, thrice hourlishly. Hourlishly. <laughs> I just want to hear that verbiage in like, in like an R&B song. Like. <laughs> We may love <laughs> thrice weekly, thrice hourly, <laughs> yea, <Yeah>, verily, <laughs> thou didst come to me <laughs> on a <her> knees, <laughs> baby, please, thrice hourly. Netflix is a place where you can watch movies and videos and stuff like that. I got all sorts of stuff on there. Man, I watch a goddamn thing every single night. I go to sleep watching movies I've already seen. I watch movies I haven't seen before. I watch can, movies that everybody always can, can you, can you of really, I hadn't seen you, until when they were on Netflix. Can you fall asleep watching things? I can't fall asleep watching anything. If there's a screen and a visual component, I will stay up for five hours. No. When I was a kid, uh, I heard a interview with Puff Daddy who said that he... He said, and specifically, yo, I got to sleep with the TV on because that way I know what to dream about. <laughs> and I literally, that's not a joke. That I actually it's like, and about. I fell asleep thrice foldishly. <laughs> thrice foldishly. Um, and uh, so ever since then, I've went to sleep with the TV on because I assumed that it would help me be better in tune with pop culture if I was absorbing it while I slept. So uh, I... Well, always, I can't watch, I can't put on anything new. So I can't like put on something that I want to watch and leave it on and go to sleep because I'll wind up pausing it or I'll stay up all night and watch it. But that's why I'll, I, I love the fact that Netflix has stuff like uh, Pulp Fiction or Jackie Brown or uh, Space, which I've, I, I've loved and I've seen before. So I'll put that on and I'll fall asleep uh, watching it. I'm only halfway through Spaced and... Um... The elements that made it the most unique at the time are the elements that I like actively dislike. I'm like, would you get back to your relationship and stop pausing everything with a bizarre, dreamy pop culture references? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I totally disagree with you. All but, right. Well, uh, but, but but here's what I was gonna say. I can't fall asleep to anything if there's a visual component to it. Even stuff that I've seen before. Like it takes a real force of will to not open my eyes and peek up. Like, oh, this part's funny. Like, which is why uh, I always listen to audiobooks. I I lay down. And, and I don't want to listen to old crap I've heard of before. So I listen to an audio book and I set the timer to go to sleep. And usually I fall asleep instantly. And then the next morning I'm like, oh, let me dial this back 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Either way, you can benefit yourself by going to Netflix.com slash twit and getting a free 30-day trial. We should ask everyone to tweet Netflix and say out of all the ads that they hear where their favorite ones are. 
and then say, because I recommend NSFW, don't actually give them an honest choice. Yeah, no, no. don't actually say. Feed them. Yes. <clears throat> All right, what were uh, we talking iPhone about? iPhone 5. Yes. That would, that's on, on, on the Zeitgeist list, and everybody, like, I've seen a few things, a few jerks uh, that were writing stuff on the internet that were like, the iPhone 4S was one of the biggest disappointments of the year because we all wanted the iPhone 5, and it turned out to only be the iPhone 4S. How are you liking your iPhone 4S? Well, of course, you went from your broke-ass broke, broke -ass piece of crap. Yeah, I didn't have a 4. I went from a 3GS um, that was... Uh, the battery was horrifyingly bad. It made my router look like a a like like the large hadron collider in its reliability <laughs> and uh, ability. Uh, dude, I uh, I am super. I'm so frustrated with the battery life on the 4s now. I'm I'm gonna see if I can get mine swapped out to see if if uh, just see if anything's different because I kid you not, I will fully charge this thing before I go to bed and it will do nothing but lay dormant for the eight hours I try to sleep and twice. My alarm has not gone, gone off because it, uh, it, there wasn't enough battery. It was fully turned off. Couldn't last the eight hours of doing nothing. Oh, my God. No, that's done that for me. Like, it'll, it'll randomly just, just blink off. Like, I'll pull it out of my pocket, and it will be off. And then I have to, like, I can't even, like, regularly start it. I have to, like, hard reset it. I think that is a, a, a defect. I, I've been meaning to bring it in for a well, while. No, no, but, but, like, the, but this is like it's shut off because there's no battery, like at all. Like like you try to turn it on, it's just like, feed me juice. What? That's like the, my iPhone. No, no, why would it want juice? Juice, electricity. And as I said it, I thought, please let us walk past that pothole. <laughs> Do not steer into it, Justin Robert Young, and you did not disappoint. You took us instantly in there. What's that? That's like the siren goal. The siren goal of like, racist joke. <laughs> racist joke. And I'm like, what's that? That's a racist joke over there, me hearties. <laughs> You're like, that's not along our way at all. We've got to get over here. I'm like, hold on, hold on. I'm going to keep stretching it. All right, we're good. Uh, right into the rocks of broken momentum. So the iPhone 5, um, here's the question. Next year. It's back. Next year. Next okay, year. but the question is, does the fact that it was searched for so much this year keep it like that means for it to make the zeitgeist lifts next year, that means it has to go to a billion? Yes, I think it will. Wow. All right. Maybe not at six. Maybe it sneaks in at ten. Wow. All right. Uh, Adele, uh, why should I have known who she is? Because she sang a lot of pretty songs with her pretty mouth. Does she have any rocking ideas that would blow my mind? Uh, never mind. She'll find someone like you. See, that's she wishes not... nothing but the best for you. I, see, I, I don't even. What is that? How about that? You had to have heard the the the. There's a fire burning in my heart. Do 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 okay just tell me this if somebody if somebody makes a faux CD cover that looks like a single, boodle a loo <laughs> by Justin Robert Young, will you make that your Twitter avatar just for like of two course. minutes? You think I got a career? Because you know you have those all those kids things, right? Like those like uh, the, the, the kids Gab Gabbas and the yeah. doodle pops of the world. <laughs> like, why can't I be like? I'll be like Glee, right? Like Glee takes all these popular songs and then repackages them for tweens and ladies. Oh, so and then have a bunch of kids sing cover versions of these songs. What if I do that for an even younger demo? <laughs> for like the two, uh, the two to five demo, I just do pop songs. I'm just called the Deedle Do. Oh, okay. And I'm just like, I just, I have a character and I walk through my crazy imaginary world and I'm wearing this hat. And then all of a sudden it's like, like, what was that? Mr. Raven? Hmm. A boodle deedle doo -de doo Deedle boodle doo, -de -doo, -de -doo. <laughs> Okay, so um 
you can tackle that market, and I'll stand up. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tackle also for the same demographic, two to five years old, because I think there's, yeah. a, there's a, it's totally wide open. I could be like um, the crass comedian. I could be like the, the – they'll be like, oh, I can't believe he said that. And I'm just all like – I'm like, hey, hey, duty, right? And they're like, ah! Kaka. Oh, so you're like, Poo-poo. you're like, what if you just took like Sam Kennison routines and just and just, I, yeah, word for word, just re. Okay, I I performed yeah. other people's material, stand up material, but I just be like, you know, exactly, yeah. And then I wish like, I could recite one of those off offhand, but I can't. Your mommy is over there saying you can't have milk. Too bad she eats boogers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Boogers. <laughs> just screaming. <laughs> So uh, Adele. So Adele, yeah, that's pretty much all we can say about <laughs> on, the, on the list. On the list uh, next year. Yes or uh, no? Me right, you wrong time. <laughs> me right, you wrong time. You're talking about uh, the Fukushima. <laughs> Fukushima. Oh, well, I was saying Steve Jobs, but sure, we can do Fukushima first. <laughs> Fukushima power plant, which, by the way, I believe uh, is is by all measures worse than Chernobyl, except for like the death toll. I, in, hadn't like nobody gotten killed by it yet. I don't think anybody has gotten killed by it. But then, like, Chernobyl is one of those things where, like, we really don't know exactly how bad Chernobyl was. Well, right? no, we do. We do. As a matter of fact, that's, I mean, we've talked about this before, uh, that Michael Crichton wanted to set a novel uh, around a nuclear disaster, and he thought, well, Chernobyl's the biggest one, went to the World Health Organization's evaluation of it, and they said that uh, t- uh, 2,000 people died from the fire when it happened. And then, yeah. you know, some some from, ra- you know, immediate exposure to ra- radiation and at most 10,000 illnesses may be attributable to the uh, to the exposure of cancer in the area. Do yeah, you- no, no, I don't I don't think like in terms of fallout like it was. Uh, but I mean, what isn't it? What isn't I don't know. Like what, what uh, was it one of those things where it's like the immediate disaster like we uh, or, or the run up to it, like and, and the safety standards, we just don't know because of the lack of transparency of, of the current government overseeing travel right. no th- th- there was there was a uh, that was a big part of it as far as finding stuff out but but they did list world health organization said that the number one most damaging effect of the chernobyl oh, disaster yeah, was was people people thinking uh, that they were be, being told that they were going to die being told that they couldn't have children being told that they you know so people didn't work it was like it was it was a massive economic calamity only because of the belief of it and then likewise you know there's something about us that just makes us so hardwired to be terrified of new but i don't stuff. think that that's going to be the same with fukushima because no one even cares anymore. Like, I, like we we're, we're we're kind of over it. Like, like no one's dying. Wow. There's not like until we start seeing. Well, no, and I mean that in 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 a good way. That if it's not this completely perilous, uh, the the Fukushima flu is killing everybody in this, you know. Circle, but, but the radius. problem is, is the people who are against nuclear power now are gonna. This is now in their arsenal. They could just say the word Fukushima, and then it conjures in their mind like, oh, all those poor people. When but no one even knows. You walk up and down, go to Iowa, and say Fukushima, man, you can't build a power plant, Fukushima. And then they like, just, they just punch that, you in the that gut. Spicy, is that like spicy tuna? Did you get avocado on that? Do you have the spicy mayo? Because I'm a big fan of that. Uh, yeah, I, like, I don't know. I just, I, I hate, I hate irrational hysteria and there's so much about it with, uh, with nuclear power and it's if so unfair. If went to Boston and screamed Fukushima, they would think he was a prospect that the Red Sox would be to gone. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Who's the guy? There's a, there's a guy. Has he got a wicked fastball? <laughs> hey, you heard about that Fukushima, huh? <laughs> what a pisser. <laughs> so there, retarded. That there's a guy. Fukushima. There's a guy. You suck. Jackie suck. <laughs> There's a guy who used to be one of the heads at uh, Microsoft who's working on a team to create nuclear power plants that run entirely on the spent fuel from other nuclear power plants. Like they, they've, like they've raised the efficiency, and he points out that uh, like uh, Fukushima was was uh, what built like half a century ago, like literally built on slide rules. There were no calculators used yeah. in the building of Fukushima, and he says that nowadays it's so different, and we can be so much more efficient to where there will be no like you can you can go to sleep on the the end product that comes out of of these other. Uh, these fifth generation, sixth generation nuclear plants. It makes sense. Yeah. I think it should happen. I would put one. I'd live over the. I'd live over the plant. Sell me an apartment. I'll live there. Okay. Uh, did you hear that? There, there's some story, and I don't know if this will ever come to pass. But there, the story was 
that uh, Japan wants bloggers to come on over and see that they're not all melted by the radiation and uh, they're willing to buy a bunch of like 10,000 uh, flights from America, 10,000 round trips they wanted to give Americans to come on over and, and talk about their experience in Japan. Really? I'll yes. go. Dude, you have no idea. I've wanted to go to Japan my entire freaking life. As long as, as long as, like, all the best cartoons come from there, all the video games came from there first. I, I, even, I even tried to uh, get a sponsorship to be a foreign exchange student over there. Would love it. Well, where is that? We got to figure that out. Is that an urban legend? Well, yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll put it out to chat realm. But I know the stories were were out there. I saw one of them, but but it was like, stay tuned for future details. Ah. So also tentacle porn. <laughs> yes. Did you see that thing that I tweeted out the other day, <laughs> where uh, it started off as a charming love story and then out of nowhere tentacle porn? Yes. No, I did. I did see. I saw that uh, Jelly D. I think. Put yes, that MC Jelly D, your friend of mine, our co king on Boner. Steve oh, Bonner, yeah. Jobs. I think that's that's a long of a of, of a very good run for 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 Mr. Jobs. And you want to know what? I'm almost like and, and obviously listen. We've I think we talked about it on the Weird Things podcast, and we probably talked about it on NSFW, and and we've we've gone into detail about our our thoughts on on Steve Jobs. But isn't it just kind of in in a in a very in the moment, self centered kind of way? Isn't it just really sort of depressing that, like, Apple's never going to be as interesting of a company, and we're never – it's never going to be the same. That's not to true. Have That's not true. Those. It, it'll, it'll be interesting again. I, I think uh... – no, 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 no. It will be interesting, and it will be relevant, and it will create the future. I'm not saying that none of that's, that none of that's possible or likely to happen. I think it is likely to happen. I think it will happen. However, it will never again be run by a guy – who had such a huge impact on the beginning of computers. Such a, a hot-headed, uh, temperamental, uh, ball-high, jean-short-wearing Mad King. Yeah, I mean, like, because there might be another cult of personality there. We don't know. That can happen. There could be another cult of personality. So to you, there, it's, it's not like they're, they're losing their vision or direction or, or any of those things. The, the fact is, is if there is vision or direction right now, it will be ascribed to a team of people, not to one person. Because, you know, he well, gets no, a lot no, of credit. I'm, I'm even saying it could be one person. I mean, I, I don't know. We, who knows as things, as the cards fall, and maybe apparently somebody rises from the ranks or you see a, a Johnny Ive or someone like become more of a, someone who's revered and, and looked at in the same way that Steve was. But... Johnny Ive won't be the guy who, you know, along with C. Wozniak, invented what we know as the personal computer. I you see. Know? Like so you, the, it, it's like it's like George Washington running a, a, a Fortune 500 company. Right. So right? so it's it's not just it's not all of the awesome, insane characteristics of of Steve's larger than life personality and the fact that he kept hitting these home runs well late into his career. It's the fact that oh yeah, he's also a genuine historical fig figure like like yeah, a, yeah. well and, and and the streak like what you said like that track record like yeah. you who could say that they had such a track record you know through the whole you know the, the beginning of his career uh even in his hiatus with pixar and everything uh and then like even be like you're like ah oh, next wasn't anything but except for the fact that next was the backbone that that made os 10 and and had that take off and then you have the iPod, iPhone, and then whatever else he had, iPad going going to the future. Like that's a streak. Like look at that as just like a guy at a blackjack table. Right. You're like that dude knows something that we don't know because every time he bets he wins. Um. That might happen, but that's gonna take a long time for someone like that. And I think it's far more likely that it happens to somebody else that we see another Steve Jobs be created that is carving out his own his own lot in life than it necessarily happening at, happening at Apple. And I think that there is something inherently less, it will never be as interesting as it was in the five years before he died. And that is, it's, it's, it's a little sad, but it is also the nature of life. All right. So uh, now I don't know if we should just roll the iPad two in there. Um, I was surprised at how, what a significant upgrade the iPad two was over the iPad one. I really dug it. And I don't know if, if I want a retina display on an iPad. You will. 
Mm. You bought every, you always do this. You oh no no no! I, like, first I'll buy I'll buy whatever it comes out. He he can say it's pink, and I'm like, oh I've got to have it, you know. But uh, but I don't know that. Uh, and and it's this only is so you could put it on your face and it'd be camouflaged. <laughs> Uh, the, but the point is, is that even, um, what's funny is I had to show another face before I cut back to mine, because otherwise I'd be playing up your joke. Um, I swear to God, if you make this a thing. <laughs> I'm about to scuttle our whole live to tape thing by unleashing a bunch of profanities all over you. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, no, no, no. I, the reason is, is because I'm really excited by the gaming possibilities on the iPad. And oh, if they yeah. if they overdo the resolution, it's going to take a major hit in frame rate and depth of, of um, graphical quality. Like right now, like the iPad 2 really ramped things up. Uh, if you like most of my games, I actually run still at 720p because if you crank it up to 1080p, uh, you you have to you have to start dropping down quality textures, lighting, shadow, blending, that kind of thing. That's what I worry about. I'll tell you what, like I don't have an iPad, but um, I have bought more video games than I have in probably 10, 15 years since I have an iPhone 4s now. Yeah, like I play I play a ton of games. Well, and keep in and, mind also the whole the whole mobile gaming market is exciting because it takes it takes away the biggest excuse against video games. I haven't got time to play video games. It uh, because you always have your phone on you, you take those idle cycle times when you're not doing anything, but and you're able to stimulate your brain and have some fun. Oh, absolutely! And Infinity Blade Two is awesome. How far into Infinity Blade Two are you? Uh, I'm probably about fifty percent of the way. I mean, it's hard to tell because like it's it's fairly open ended, like right. in terms of like I guess probably the only way that you can like there's a main mission that you have to beat. Uh, but this one is like if Infinity Blade One was made by man, Infinity Blade, Blade Two was made by God. <laughs> like it's it's so great and like wow. they fixed all the all the kind of annoying elements of Infinity Blade One where it was a little repetitive and you got to a point where once you beat the main mission it was just like hey level up on everything and you're like all right i like leveling up but because money is so scarce in infinity blade one like it basically meant you had to run the entire game over and 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 over again right uh to build up enough money to buy the next thing so you could level up on that yeah 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 this it it's like all right let's just make money far more freely available let's make the forks in the road way different and way varied and uh now there are like dead ends like you can follow a few forks and then beat a boss and you think well this is gonna be it and then you just die and go back to the beginning because that wasn't the boss that you were supposed to beat in that order so oh wow you have to beat the bosses in the right order or you i don't to know to be honest i haven't beat oh, okay. the right boss yet i just i keep beating bosses and i keep dying and i assume it's because i haven't found the right one that is hilarious uh so ipad 2 back for next year uh no well no no ipad 3 makes the list ipad 3 will be there but ipad 2 will not but ipad 3 will also be able uh to operate as a hang glider <laughs> hang gliders will be uh the top of the zeitgeist hey uh what do you expect um you know we're doing uh, on the night attack album we speculated wildly about what a live nsfw show at a corporate event would be where we're emceeing stuff and uh now not that unlike the corporate thing where we have to yeah. do crap work you know that we're only doing because it pays well and we have to say things that we don't believe or care about this is the reverse this is like the best of all worlds like we're gonna walk out on stage and we're looking at about two thousand people showing up for this yeah. and by the way if you don't know what you, what we're talking about we should really have a link uh here you you explain what's going on i'll make a bitly link all right so um at the sun resort in Orlando, Florida, uh, we are going to have ourselves a little New Year's Eve bash. I'm going to be there. Brian's going to be there. A bunch of chat realms going to be there, and uh, we're going to ring in the new year in style uh, with our uh, our hilarious japes. Brian's going to do his full stage show. We're going to have a fantastic pop and lock dance crew by the name of Remote Control and the world's 
fa most famous DJ, DJ Scratchy, is going to be there. Um, it's going to be kicking off at 8 o'clock at night until 5 in the morning. If you are listening to this, then you are officially invited to hang out with us personally and uh, do nothing but uh, drink and high five and do cartwheels. I will be doing a cartwheel. Brian will be doing a cartwheel. Um, you can do a cartwheel and then we'll all high five at the end of it. And uh, you can take a picture of it and send it to your mom at one o'clock in the morning. I, if you call your mom, I will curse at her. If you come down to this, to this thing, you can call up your mom and your mom's gonna be like, hello. Happy New Year to you, too. And I'm going to be like, put it in your A, Grandma, and then hang up on the phone. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to title this one NSFWNYE. All right, there it is. Tiny URL created. Uh, and actually, all I was able to find was some random posting. I have no idea. I saw the words buy tickets, and so I assume you'll, be able to, you'll at least see what the event is. So go to NSF, uh, tinyurl.com slash nsfw nye tiny com slash nsfw nye uh and if you want what we can do is why don't how about the night of the event we have john just keep whipping out his phone and catching a bunch of highlights and our, the nsfw after it should just be a bl giant blow up uh remembrance of all the best parts of the live stage show of of hanging out with people after the show uh like this is it, it, it's amazing because I was playing Star Wars The Old Republic last night and random people from all over Southeast United States are like I was thinking of coming to that thing yes come on out it's only like what $28 I think is what it is 25 20 you can take those other three dollars and get three chicken McNuggets at McDonald's on Mondays that's right and uh, uh, so so yeah so it's so cost only $25 and they, they're almost out of hotel packages as well so you might want to call and it's cheap it's like if you want to get a, a package for two at the VIP level and a hotel as well it's like 140 bucks it's like mega cheap you know so spend the night with us and I mean in my bed I'll be sleeping with everybody who comes and asks so I guess now is as good a time as any, Justin. Uh, what with uh, the event being in eight days and uh, pre-sales are already over 1,500. Sure. Um, we're shooting for about 2,000 is what we're hoping for. Yeah. Pretty sure we're, we're gonna make that happen. Uh, this will be, without any doubt, the biggest event in the history of NSFW show. Uh, the biggest yeah. thing you and I have ever done for, uh, of course. at sure. all. What, uh, what do you suppose we should do? Talk. Just get Use up words. there and. It's working so far right now. <laughs> I thought you'd give me a mic. Just give me a beat, DJ Scratchy. Beetle do do do. Beetle do do. Beetle do 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 do. Do do. Do you know what? I picture I pictured this awesome sideways universe where you get up there and you start doing it and the whole audience is singing along Beatle for Do. They're like Beatle Doo Doo Doo. You know, like in rock band when you start really rocking and the audience starts singing along with you as Absolutely, you're playing. Yeah. And then you're like Beatle Doo. Maybe uh, yeah. maybe we that should be a track on Night Attack where it's like we do it like a faux documentary and we, we detailed the rise and continued rise of Justin Robert Young's beatle doo a new style of, of music. Yeah. And we can, we can play, in fact, we could use, we can use a clip from the live event and, and play it up like, you know, here's the premiere performance of beatle doo by Justin Robert Young. Why is it so sedate? Cause it's like like NPR. Yes, and th that's exactly what it is. We we're like a o man. only by pledging twenty five dollars <laughs> do you get to see Justin Robert Young's Beetle Do performance at the link at the Kennedy Center uh, two months ago. Let's go to a clip. <laughs> Beetle Do. Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm testing it. And tinyurl.com slash nsfwnye seems to take you to the ledger.com on the events calendar. And there is a link to buy tickets, but otherwise it at least it at least gives you the detail. They're giving away a mother effing car. Did you know that? Oh, also, yeah, a Kia. Oh, yeah, you by can, the way, you can, you can get a car. So why don't And you they're going to give it to you while you're drunk. Yeah. And you can just drunk drive it right <laughs> off the line. <laughs> well, actually, as long as you don't get on city streets, you can just drunk drive around inside the arena. Donuts. And then, just and, doing donuts. <laughs> We're going to do a bleach burnout. <laughs> yes. It's going to be awesome. 
Uh, yeah, listen, um, it's going to be fun. And uh, there we go. Are you worried? Are you worried about this at all? Me? Mm-hmm. Do I look worried? Beetle to do. All right, but, but here's the thing. Most of the people there, I'm assuming, are not there for NSFW, but are there for DJ Scratchy and Remote Control, two very talented bands, or perhaps the fact that we're giving away a car, which means we have to kind of audition this this. I don't want to say hostile audience. This is an audience that's not going to be in on the Diamond Club stuff. Uh, dude, put me in front of people. All I do is all I do is win, baby. I'm like, uh, I, I just I just get out there, and it's going to be a fun time. We're going to have a great time with the crowd. They're going to be looking at me. Now, the only time I worried was because there was a there was a mention of an act that might have been our musical act. I don't want to say who, but it was a very popular hip hop act that came very close to being booked for this event. I have no idea who you're talking about. Um, let's just say the answer was no, but it was very close to being a yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well played. I forgot about all that was was almost in the works. So that was almost that almost happened, and that crowd oh that is a very specific crowd that is there for a very specific. It's not they're not just there to have a good time; they're there to see a concert. Oh my god! I'm so glad and we that, dodged a bullet on that. Not, that's not for us. We that can't just been... get up there and be like, "Hey, everybody, who wants a beach ball? Let's get a ball <laughs> bouncing, huh?" They're all like, "You ever you ever watching the YouTubes?" And they're like, first. Right? What's up with that? What's going on? Hey, who's over there? Are you wearing an Atlanta Hawks jersey? I love Dominic Wilkins. <laughs> hey. Uh, as as we work guy. as he we only just states facts. <laughs> as as hey, we mentioned, what's up with black shirts? <laughs> Can't be seen if you're bike riding at night. <laughs> you might want to be careful there. Uh, okay, look, um, man, what else is there to say? Uh, t- happy 2011, man. Well, I mean, no, I mean, 2011 is over. So, I mean, if it's going to be happy, it would have been happy. It, it was happy. It was, was it? happy. Sure. Mm-hmm. We we reached uh, 100 episodes. We had a Billboard charting top 10 comedy album. I like to think of it as a Billboard charting. <laughs> Billboard charting. <laughs> that was uh, my favorite response was uh, when I sent out the email detailing the fact that we had, had done that. Um, uh, uh, Pretty Jumbles responded just saying, who charted? <laughs> uh, and then, uh, yeah, no, we had a great, the Dragon Con episode was uh, maybe one of my favorite memories. Dragon Con in general. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I loved. And, and uh, no, listen, I think it's going to be, it's going to be great. And, and I very much look forward to uh, 2012. And really the addition of, I feel like we're, we're, we're building like a new house, me and me and you. That we're 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 building a new house in conjunction with Veronica and and Chad. Oh, you're talking Dan. about the whole game on experience. Game on. Yeah, thing. we almost yeah. launched our new show this year. Looking very close. Actually, to be honest, I am way glad that they pushed it back those two months. Uh, mainly because we would have had a stupid erratic release schedule. It would have been every other or every third week you got an episode, and uh, we have, the stuff we have digested. And have come up with in the last two months in order to you know to, to go into game on. I think the delayed release is only going to increase the impact of the show when it comes out. And it also allowed me to realize my new favorite game, which is since I write the jokes for Brian, to use all the jokes I've written on NSFW. Oh, please don't. The week previous. Stop. So Brian stop, looks like stop. he's a copycat. Stop. Stop. And you're like you're like what you gonna do, Brian? You gonna write new material? Ah! I'm the writer. We all know I'm you. a writer. I'm trying to write in here. I'm trying to write. Uh, no, listen. Uh, in all in all earnestness, folks, uh, I, you know I'm serious because I'm taking off my glasses. <laughs> uh, Chat Realm is the best thing on earth. And Brian, uh, I had another awesome year hanging out with you on the internet professionally. And I look forward to spending more time in, in 2012 and if everybody who can make it out to orlando florida dude this new year's eve tinyurl.com slash nsfwnye 25 bucks 
and grab yourself a hotel room. We will party with you in person. It's going to be a blast. Follow the clues, gumshoes. Oh, the wow. tinyurl.com slash NSFW. That's how you know. Fine. That's how you know this is important to you is when you bust out a gumshoe plea. <laughs> like, gumshoes, please, you've got to buy tickets. Because Brian knows how, how loath how, how loath I am to break up the gumshoe. <laughs> yeah. Brian knows my secret resentment to the gumshoe boy. Yes! That's exactly right. So you're like, if you if you put on the clown suit to dance around for the gig, you know it's important to me. Yes. Well, they, I hope they enjoyed the clown suit. I hope you guys enjoyed the bonus episode. Sorry that wasn't nearly as good as anything else we've ever done in the past, but uh, we did it live to tape. We, yeah, and if you didn't like it, I hope you die this year. There's that. We also, uh, yeah, we're, I'm, I we're mean, just 2011, not 2012. <laughs> I hope you die it's in the next five days. And I'm so depressed All right, and I'm, I'm out of here. Take care, bye. Bye. Dying of fire. Next. This year, preferably. See you, you next Tuesday. Not if you hated the show, because I hope you're dead by it. <laughs> Our next episode after this is going to be like, oh, God, was that a disaster? That New Year's thing was the worst idea we've ever had. No, the next episode after New Year's Eve is going to be gone. I'm glad Steve's gone, because he died after he didn't like the show. Oh, my God. Then you spend a single moment without Brian Brushwood. Oh, I'd rather be dipped in honey and fed to a big ant pile Than to do without Justin Robert Young for even a little while Oh, NSFW I love you Wait, can I say real quick that my favorite thing in the entire world is the fact that old John Smokey insists on continuing to tweet long after the novelty of his brief appearance on NSFW has faded. Uh, I, I, like the fact he just he just tweeted just now, my buddy Steve just gave me a spoon from his trip to Tennessee. With Tennessee misspelled. You dropped. Justin. I don't know who old John Smokey is, but he is my favorite tweeter right now, even more than the pie high dog, because old John Smokey is the best. So, oh man, look, as live again. So good. I'm finally alone by myself. Justin, I can say that uh, I hate your olive skin. I hate your, your newsy newsboy paper throwing oh now you're just gonna leave you're just gonna you're gonna act like the call was dropped and i have to call you back uh i don't know about you guys justin can't hear this part but this is uh i probably should not have taken right now as the time to have him explain to me an old news story because there was entirely too much time making fun of the, or explaining the news story and not nearly enough time making fun of other people so now i'm calling him back and as you can see his call is dropped and i'm trying to call him again and again <laughs> Oh, and you're gone. You're gone again. And you're going to come back and you're going to tell me. You're going to tell me that it's going great. And you're going to say that everything's fine. And we should continue this bizarre idea of doing live to tape and act like it's no big deal that you're spending half of it completely disconnected. And you're going to say it's a funny running gag. You're going to tell me it's some kind of running gag. And then you're like, this is what makes it electric. And this is what makes it good. But meanwhile, I'll be dying on the inside, Justin. I'll be dying on the inside because every time... You propose a high-flying shenanigan, and reality comes crashing to Earth. I'm the one sitting behind the vid blaster. Oh, by the way, now that I'm talking to Chat Realm, I actually got, I actually got a, a fistful of genuine licenses to vid blaster. This is the program that I use. You guys see me talk about it all the time to do all the switching for the show. Uh, I've got licenses for the home edition, so you can actually, I think it's like a hundred dollar product that I will give away, and I'm gonna do first come first serves. Um, let me just say this, uh, all you have to do is uh, drop me a tweet. No, uh, I'm going to say drop me an email to brian at schwood.com, B-R-I-A-N at S-H-W-O-O-D.com and say the, ba the, the, the bass word, don't call it the password. You got to call it the bass word is fishy face. And if and then and then the first, I, I don't know, I think I might have 10 licenses, but the first 10 people to send me 
an email that says the bass word is fishy face get licenses but most of you will be too late in which case you just listen to me talk about the bass word is fishy face <laughs> But uh, but seriously, I, I do want to give a huge shout out to Mike Verstieg over at VidBlaster. He's a one man operation who's putting together. Uh, he literally, you can ask for a feature and it will be written up in the next version of the software. And he's nice enough to uh, he he hooked us up with an early version of the software before it was even in full release. That's why BB Live Show existed, and uh, we owe it all to him. And rejoining us on this perfectly smooth live <laughs> to tape episode. 